way my Savior leads me Cheers each winding path I tread Gives me grace for every trial Feeds me with the living Good morning, everybody. Chester ARP Church Devotional Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. This is the 650th episode of the Chester ARP Church Devotional Podcast. Kind of hard for me to believe that we've been doing it for that long. Took last week off. We pick it back up here in chapter 24 of 2 Samuel, the last chapter of the book. Uh, Kind of an interesting yet important, I believe, section in um, 2 Samuel and the life of David. 2 Samuel 24, beginning in 1. Again, the anger of the Lord was kindled kindled against Israel, and he incited David against them, saying, Go number Israel and Judah. So the king said to Joab, the commander of the army who was with him, Go through all the tribes of Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, and number the people, that I may know the number of the people. But Joab said to the king, May the Lord your God add to the people a hundred times as many as they are, while the eyes of my lord the king still see it. But why does my lord the king delight in this thing? But the king's word prevailed against Joab and the commanders of the army. So Joab and the commanders of the army went out from the presence of the king to number the people of Israel. They crossed the Jordan and began from Arori um, and from the city that is in the middle of the valley toward Gad and on to Jazer. Then they came to Gilead and to Kadesh in the land of the Hittites. And they came to Dan from, and from Dan they went around Sidon and came to the fortress of Tyre, and to all the cities of the Hivites and Canaanites. And they went out to the Negev of Judah at Beersheba. So they, when they had gone out through all the land, they came to Jerusalem at the end of nine months and twenty days. And Joab gave the sum of the numbering of the people to the king. In Israel there were 800,000 valiant men who drew the sword, and the men of Judah were 500,000. So at the conclusion of David's life, he takes a census, he counts the people. The conclusion of the census or the the results of the census was that there was 1.3 million men who drew the sword in all of Israel and Judah. So all of David's kingdom had 1.3 million valiant men who drew the sword. Now you have to remember David was a man who was a man of war. God told David, David wanted to build God a house and God told him in 2 Samuel chapter 7, I'm going to build you a house. You can't build me a house for you're a man of war. It's not surprising that David at the end of his life wanted to know the number of soldiers. It's interesting that we're told in the beginning of of verse 1 that the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel and David was incited again and he incited David against them. And so David is angry, frustrated with the people because of their apparent sin and lack of faithfulness to the Lord. So David is frustrated. So David wants to go out and number them. So he says to Joab, his commander, go out and number the people. Now, this was a sin. This was something that they were not supposed to do. The king was not supposed to number the people. There is a moment in the book of Numbers where God specifically says number the people. But as a whole, they were not supposed to number the people. In fact, he had been instructed not to do that. The reason is because God wants us to see that we rely upon him. All right, so if you go out in numbers and say, man, we got 1.3 million valiant men swings that could draw the sword. We can go to battle and take on anybody anytime because we have such a large, powerful army. We have such a large number of people who can go out to war on our behalf. Right, so the idea is that you begin to rely upon your own strength. You think you can do things that you have no business doing. You take steps and take measures to accomplish things that uh, are outside the will of God or you don't pursue the will of God because you think I can do this in my own strength. We have those moments in our own days, uh, in our own lives all the time, whether it be a church, whether it's numbers or whether it be a, uh, a bank account in your own personal life or whether it be your own gifts and abilities and, and experiences and skills, etc. You think I can just do what I need to do without relying upon the will of God and upon the strength of God. God doesn't want his people in that position. 
He wants us dependent upon him. He wants Israel dependent upon him. He wants David dependent upon him. Interestingly, Joab says here, uh, may the Lord add to the people a hundred times as many as they are while the eyes of my Lord, the king still see it. But why does my Lord king delight in this thing? Joab knows that what he's doing is not right. Why do you want to go count them? May the Lord just add and double the numbers. Why do you need to go do it? But the king prevailed against Joab and Joab goes out and nine months later comes back. And after he comes back, he says, you have 800,000 men in Israel and 500,000 men in Judah. Add them together, 1.3 million men who are valiant and able to, to carry the sword and draw the sword against an enemy. That's where the story is. Now, God is going to be angered by this. We'll see that tomorrow. Uh, with the reference to David's sin and David's choice as the grace of God. But I think it's important. We must rely upon the Lord, not upon our strength. And we must always pursue him. And there are moments when we will be tempted to not do that. And we must fight that temptation to rely upon ourselves and then so begin to rely upon the strength of our God as we rely upon him to advance his kingdom for our for his glory and for our good. Let's depend upon the Lord and rest in him. You guys have a great day. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. You carry me close to your heart And surely your goodness and mercy will follow